Cardiovascular disease is the largest cause of death in the world. I guess what I'm saying is look around the room right now and statistically speaking, most of us are going to die of a cardiovascular related disease. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be this way. You see, many cardiovascular diseases can be prevented and the severity can be dramatically reduced by changing a number of our waking behaviours. And we know what many of those are. If we think about good quality research and clear public health messaging, we're thinking of too much saturated fats in our diet, too much salt. We're thinking about not meeting our physical activity guidelines, not exercising as much as we should do. And we know all of these things. But what if I told you that there was a risk factor which you could change that independently is associated with cardiovascular disease risk and mortality and you've been doing it for the last 45 minutes. And that is sitting down. Because we weren't designed to sit. Prolonged periods of sitting cause a number of cardiovascular dysfunctions on the body. So for example, we've been sat down here for 45 minutes and Right now, your calves have started to swell up a little bit. So much so that they've actually increased in circumference by somewhere between one and two and a half centimetres. Don't believe me? Pull your socks down, have a look. <laughs> the elastic fibres in your socks are now indented on your ankles and your calves. And this is largely because we get a reduction in blood flow when we sit. And we don't want to reduce blood flow. See, this is a bad thing. Reducing blood flow doesn't do us any favours. In fact, we want to do the opposite. We want to stimulate blood flow. Because when our heart contracts, our arteries dilate slightly to allow blood to easily transfer through it. And then they contract again afterwards. And when we move about, we really help this kind of Mexican wave effect that happens around all of our vessels. But when we sit, that doesn't happen. Our arteries become stiffer. And our blood pressure goes up. Right now, your blood pressure's gone up. Your heart is currently working harder than it should be. Which is tricky when we think about the white collar worker who spends a lot of time sat down. I guess before I tell you about what I think we can do about this, I want to tell you about why it's important. I've already mentioned that it's the largest cause of death in the world, but it's important because rates of cardiovascular disease are going up. And they're going up quickly. Within the last couple of decades, we're seeing an exponential rise in the rates of cardiovascular disease. This is not just important because we're, more people are dying from it, but it's important because of things like quality of life. I mean, we might be living longer, but those latter years aren't necessarily good quality ones. I mean, think about serious strokes. We can't move around as much as we once could. There's a number of well-being issues with this. It's not just well-being, it's financial as well. It hits all of our purse pockets. Cardiovascular diseases costs the UK healthcare system around £9 billion per year. Think about what we could do with that money, what we could fund. It costs the UK healthcare system, but it costs the broader economy in the UK about £19 billion. I mean, think about that from a human resources perspective for a second. How many sick days is that? How much time off of work? It's enormous. So it's an important topic, and it's important that we do something about it. Well, what can we do? Well, we can change our waking behaviours. We can change the things that we do. And as a cardiovascular physiologist interested in, in exercise and health, this is what we've been researching for a number of years. So let's think about how much time do we actually spend sitting down. I mean, what does our average day look like? If we're really lucky, we get eight hours of sleep. And then we get up and we, we potter around the house, we do the dishes, we do some washing. We've got kids, we sort those out, we get them off to school. And then we probably drive or, or, or get the bus to work and sat down. We then sit down at work for what, three, four hours. If we're lucky, we get a lunch break and we move about a bit. And then we sit down for another three, four, five hours. And then we get home and we potter around the house again, sort the kids out. And if we're really good, we go for a run, or go for a bike, or go to the gym. 
And then we probably have some food and sit down again for the rest of the evening. We are easily spending 12 hours of our day in a sitting position, which is a huge period of time. And then we've got about three and a half hours of light physical activity, which is the pottering around the house thing. And then, like I said, if we're really good, we've got that, that gym time, that run. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, but that exercise at the end of the day, that's all right. That's good, because that'll offset all of the damage that I've done, because I'm aware that I sit for a long period of time. And exercise is key. It is really good for us. It's absolute wonder drug. But that half an hour run around the block, your 5K that you do because you know you've been sat down all day, it's not enough. To offset the damage that's occurred within a 12-hour period, you would need to exercise for 60 minutes every day of every week of the year, which is Quite a lot. <laughs> Let's think about physical activity guidelines for a second and who meets them. If we ask people and they report back with questionnaires, 50, 60% of the population meet those guidelines, 150 minutes a week. If we use accelerometers, which are little small computers that we put on the thigh and we measure people, it's somewhere between 3 and 6%. <laughs> so, I'm reasonably confident in saying that you're not going to do 60 minutes every single day. And I guess, well, what can we do? We want to protect our cardiovascular system. We want to protect the heart. And changing the way that we think about our 24-hour clock is, is key. Interrupting sitting is really important. I've told you that it doesn't take very long for your calves to swell up because of a reduction in blood flow and how our arteries become stiff and our blood pressure goes up. But there's a really simple way to mitigate it. We've shown that if you get up and just do a couple of minutes of walking and a few standing calf raises, every 30 minutes we can offset most of that dysfunction. Which isn't really that much. But I know what some people are thinking, You're, oh, can you imagine it? Mid-meeting, boardroom, you're two hours in, executives Telling you that you haven't brought them in enough money. <laughs> and you're, ha oh, hang on, so I'm just going to go for a quick walk. A <laughs> couple of laps of the table, some kind of F1 circuit, sit back down. It doesn't really work, does it, behaviourally? You, you can't see your employees doing it. And you're right. It doesn't really fit within our society. But our lab has shown that if we fidget <laughs> for one minute out of every five, you know, fidgeting that thing that's really frustrating. You know, your office mate probably does it at the end and the whole table's shaking, or it's the thing that you told your kids not to do. Just sit still, stop fidgeting. One minute of every five offsets most of that damage, stops the pooling from happening. Blood flow is increased to our lower limbs. Our heart isn't having to work as hard. A simple behavioural strategy. I've talked a lot about, I guess what we call central cardiovascular health, really the, the heart, and the legs, um, but, but the cardiovascular system and cardiovascular diseases are, are those associated with blood vessels in the heart, and our brain is filled with blood vessels, and that's affected too. <laughs> so when we sit for a prolonged period of time, uninterrupted, as you're doing now, we get a decrease in blood flow to the brain, we get a decrease in the level of oxygenation around what we call the prefrontal cortex, the areas associated with cognition, decision making, task switching, all impaired with periods of prolonged sitting. But again, getting up, moving around every 30 minutes, those few minutes of walking and those standing calf raises, and even that leg fidgeting for one minute out of every five, offsets it, improves our decision making, improves our cognitive awareness, improves our ability to switch between different tasks, improves brain blood flow. So, it's pretty important. It's important for a number of reasons, but particularly as we start moving forwards from the pandemic. I mean, think about the number of businesses which are encouraging people to remain at home. Some people aren't leaving the house. That little bit of commute that we had in the morning no longer happens, and now they're not really leaving the office or spare bedroom, wherever you're tucked away. 
So we need to really think about this. And we saw this throughout the lockdown strategies. Some of our research showed that people were sitting for two, three hours more every day. We really need to rethink the way that we approach this. We need to be interrupting sitting where possible. We need new behavioural strategies. If you're in a position of influence, if you have influence over human resources, companies, it's in your interests and the interest of your employees to consider how you can change their waking behaviours, how you can change their office time, how you can shift to or away from prolonged periods of sat down in the office. It's good for your business, it's good for cognition, it's good for executive functions, it's good for our cardiovascular health. Think about the number of sick days which we could recuperate. So I guess if I'm to leave you with one thing, it would be remember that every movement matters. Thank you.